parallel. There are six envelopes on the shelf. A new one arrives every three or four days. I'm afraid to open them. There are five more on the table. Identical blue envelopes, opened with the letters beside them. Half the time I keep rereading them, trying to understand. The other half, I don't want to go near them. It started two months ago, when Andrew died. We knew it was coming. It had been coming for a year. Cancer. Inoperable. We did all our crying in the first few weeks after the diagnosis, then settled down to enjoy every moment we had together and making plans for me to care for him near the end. Ten years we'd been together, and the last six months were some of the best times. And the worst. One of the things he asked me to do. Write a letter to Betty explaining everything. The woman he'd left for me, his ex-wife. I don't think he ever stopped loving her. And he always regretted he couldn't love her in the way she wanted. Yes, we talked about it. I understood. I wanted to meet her, but Andrew said it was a bad idea. I kept a copy. Dear Betty... I am very sorry to have to tell you this, but your former husband, Andrew, died on Tuesday, 13th September. He died from colon cancer, peacefully and in little pain. Andrew often used to tell me how much he wanted a reconciliation with you, but he was always fearful of how you would react. You and he did not part on good terms, and he didn't want to risk causing you further pain by reopening old wounds. I am George, the man Andrew spent the last decade of his life with. To you, no doubt, I am the man who destroyed your marriage, and you have no reason to listen to me. But I promised him I would contact you after his death. It went on for a few more pages about our life together and the stuff he'd asked me to say. I didn't expect a response, but a week later a blue envelope dropped through the letterbox, and inside... Oh, George, why did he have to wait till he was dead to tell me all those things? It's so typical of him that he couldn't say the very things he most needed to tell. He was such a sensitive man, which, of course, must be why I married him. Of course I don't hate you, George. Oh, I was angry at first. How dare he leave me like that? And for another man, too. Oh, the scandal. Whatever would the neighbors say? But I got over all that very quickly. I still cared about him, enough to let him live his life as he needed even if it was without me. There really was no need for all those years of silence between us. It's such a shame, but I thought if he didn't want contact with me, that was his right. If only I'd been just a little more disrespectful and written to him. Ah, but life is full of if only and what if. If only I was able to get to the funeral and say goodbye to my dear husband, and finally meet the one who made him happy. But maybe it's best that I can't. The photographs brought back so many memories. Thank you for them, and for sharing your memories of our man. What a nice lady, I thought. I wondered about writing to her again, maybe meeting up. But three days later, another letter came. Thank you for your letter about Andrew. Unfortunately, the intended recipient, Mrs. Betty, died some months before her ex-husband, together with her then-husband and their young daughter in a motoring accident.
Andrew was my cousin, though we didn't know each other well. As a solicitor in the family, I was asked to be responsible for Mr. and Mrs. S. business interests, which now includes the legal situation following their demise, which is why your letter found its way to my desk. I will pass on the photographs to the remaining family members who I am sure will appreciate them. I read it through several times, confused. Could there be some mistake? Some series of miscommunications in the family which led to the two letters? Days later, I'd just decided to shrug it off when another letter arrived in an envelope identical with the first two. Is this some kind of joke? If so, I consider it utterly baffling and in extremely poor taste. My husband and I have never had any connection with the deviant lifestyle you hint at, and I resent this continuation of the distressing rumours that he is anything other than a good Christian husband and a respected member of the community. Please be advised that if you continue this wicked campaign of harassment, I shall have no recourse but to inform the proper authorities. I put the three letters side by side, trying to puzzle it out. For a few days I went away and managed to forget about the whole thing. Then, when I came back, there was another envelope waiting. Hi. I'm Jane, and I look after my Aunt Betty. I got your letter, and even though it was meant for her, I open all her letters for her, because she can't anymore. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm so glad you and my auntie's old husband were so happy together. It's so sad that her memory's going, but even so, she remembers him well and talks about them going on dates together. I think I'll put some of those pictures you sent in her room so she can see them and tell me about your friend so it's like I can sort of know him too. I can understand a man leading a double life. Andrew spent years doing just that, some of it with me. But this, it's like all the lives he could have led, all the people he could have known, but somehow... Converging, converging on me. Another one came. Thank you for the photographs. I always heard that my wife's first husband ran away with another man, but no one wanted to talk about it. It is good to finally see images of my wife in younger days. We met in later life, some years after her first marriage ended, and she had no images from that time. Also, I suppose it is you I have to thank for making my own happy marriage possible. The age difference between Betty and myself raised many eyebrows and not a few hackles, so I can only imagine what you must have gone through with my predecessor. I think, if I may be presumptuous, I will not show the photographs or your letter to my wife. But this is to let you know they are appreciated. Since then, there's been six more, and I think another one came this morning, but I don't 